Welcome to the Arenic Mountains. This is a tale of conditions that I wasn't quite expecting, a plan that never came to be, and a whole new adventure unfolding instead. Oh my goodness! That was hard work. I'm not getting anywhere in a hurry today. <laughs> it is mid-March and I had planned a 12 kilometer circular route, including a summit of Moilhifnon, a 751 meter peak to the southwest of Arinic Vaur, but none of that is gonna happen. My oh, this is, this is past my knee. You see, as a southerner, prior to this trip, the deepest snow I had ever experienced is just a few inches. And here I've arrived in the mountains with a big heavy rucksack, prepared for the cold and the type of snow that I'm used to, but instead finding myself in deep snow drifts. And not only were they difficult to travel through, but the worry of getting snowed in if there was another snowfall was really playing on my mind. Yeah. I can't, I can't walk in it. I made it only a kilometre from where I'd parked before realising I couldn't go any further and definitely wouldn't be summiting any peaks. Cutted. I don't think this is happening. I trudged up and down through the drift-covered paths, debating what to do. Maybe I was quite literally out of my depth there. I could give up, get back to the car, drive home. But eventually I decided to collect water from a stream and at least have a go at finding somewhere to camp for the night. The route I had planned was not passable, but maybe Arenic Fowl would let me ascend away up its low slopes instead. I was just thinking that I'm making nice progress up here and like... <laughs> Under the snow. I don't like it. So today has been a total misadventure from the start. Even on a drive up here, I got stuck in snow in my car. I'll tell you about it later. Yeah, I'm not used to all this snow and stuff. Well, I have somehow made it up to 470 meters and far enough from the road, I think. I don't mind it too much. Apologies if you can still hear it. The snow's not too deep here. We're gonna pitch up because we'll be losing sun. Stay out. All set up. Ain't it beautiful? minus three degrees already. I really can't believe how difficult it is to walk in deep snow. I've never experienced snow this deep before, so this is all new to me. This whole trip so far has gone completely not to plan whatsoever, but it's fine and it's beautiful. I mean, look at it. So today I'm wearing waterproof socks, which I've never tried before because the last trip, the Marwins are just sick of having soaked boots and soaked feet all the time. So I thought if I try some waterproof socks, I mean, they're damp on the outside and I've got like a, a thin, fine pair of merino socks underneath. Yeah, and underneath is completely dry. Oh, that's so nice. And you know what? I haven't had cold feet at all today, not once, probably because they're nice and dry. Yay! Only thing is, because the socks got two pairs on, so floofy, I 
couldn't get my boots on so <laughs> I've had to buy a massive pair of bigger boots but it's fine it's working well let me show you quickly on the map where we've been <laughs> so this is the route that I planned about 12 kilometer route up to Moyle if not that's not going to be happening <laughs> so I've parked over here and I've come down here and followed this track along fine 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 and then it's this bit here the snow is so deep like up to my bum in places and there's streams coming under it so it just felt really sketchy and I was worried about if there's more snow dumped during the night that I wouldn't be able to get out again tomorrow so I've come from here back down to here filled up my water and then just made a way up to here that's where we are now for camp at 470 meters on Aranik Val so I've been having a think about what I want to do tomorrow and I'm none the wiser um, I can't get through round to Moylehifnan as planned and I've ended up halfway up Aranik Val not as planned it's going to be cold again tomorrow I think and I think the next day it's going to suddenly warm up which worries me because there is a lot of snow up here and that's all going to suddenly melt so I don't know I'm going to sleep on it and I'm just going to evaluate in the morning see what the situation is with the weather and the conditions and I do want to say a massive thank you to three guys who helped me today on the way up here I got stuck in the snow in my car I was just driving into the national park and there was a guy in a van like stuck in a ditch in the snow and I thought oh god I better turn around and go check he's okay but he was fine and he said that someone was coming out to help him so I drove up the road and turned into a pull-in to try and turn around and start going back the right direction again but I didn't realize how deep the snow was and I got totally stuck my car would not move the wheels were just spinning I didn't have anything on me to put under the wheels obviously there was no wood about I tried putting a blanket under the wheels <laughs> and that got me about a foot anyway so these three guys came along bless them and they jumped out and they pushed my car as I was revving it back onto the road yeah so <laughs> thank you so much you guys you are amazing and you saved my weekend there so yeah this goes to show I suppose it's always good to do a little kindness because you never know when you might need one in return and also that despite what the media and what not want you to think there's a lot of good people in this world a lot of kindness some chocolate under these stars in the snow. I'm going to say goodnight guys so I'll see you in the morning and decide what we're going to do. Morning campers. Wind's getting up a bit this morning. I've made a bit of an error. So it turns out last night, right before bed, I drank a fully caffeinated coffee. I'm very caffeine sensitive. So I spent all night awake wondering why I felt so jittery and weird. I've only just realised this morning what I've done. So I feel pretty ropey. I won't lie. I don't feel good. <laughs> but the views are beautiful. And you know, in this tent this morning, it was below freezing outside and it was nine degrees in the tent, which is absolutely incredible. I really begrudged paying out for this tent when I bought it. I thought there's no way it's going to be worth that much money, but I love it. So I think I've made a plan for today. I'll show you what I'm thinking. So I think today... I'm not doing Arnig Flower, the snow's too deep, 
It's too sketchy. I can't get to more than if not. So I'm just going to come back down, follow the track back to where I came from. And then this is like a little tiny road here. So I'm going to follow this along because that will be easy hiking. And then I'm going to see if I can take this track here. And we should have gorgeous views of the Noranic Valley and this lake here as well. So yeah, I think that will be beautiful. Let's try that. So hopefully nice lake views for night two. I'm just going to sit here a little while longer. And then we'll go. just follow my footsteps back down from yesterday without too much bother. I think the snow drifting has covered them completely. I'm nearly down now. That was really easy. Got to follow all my tracks in the snow from yesterday all the way down. So I will see you over there in a few kilometers. So we have come east a few kilometers down that single track road, lovely, easy walk in. That is Ning Kellen behind me. And we're gonna head south now down to Bin Arenig Vower. So that's gonna be lovely and wild, I think. We are at 436 meters. The lake is just over there. So I think I'm gonna come off this path check it out. <laughs> Snowdrift fun times again. Right, let's see if we can get down close to the water. was hard work. Let's get in. Get cozy. Hello housey. Oh look. <laughs> hmm. I am all sorted. I'm all cozy. I've got some hot food in my belly and we are pitched up at 435 meters on the northeasterly side of Arenikau, which 
she's up there in the clouds now. So we've come round from the northwesterly side this morning. I've only travelled five kilometres today, just over, but that's far enough for me in these conditions. Travelling through deep snow really takes it out of you, uses a lot of energy. It's hovering around freezing at the moment, but the forecast is saying that it's going to warm up in the night to seven or eight degrees which is why I didn't want to camp down by the lake because I'm worried with this much snow, if that all suddenly melts, there could be crazy flash flooding and things like that. So I've camped quite high up out of the way. I don't think that'll affect me if it does happen. I'm so pleased with everything I brought with me this weekend again. It's all functioned really, really well. It kept me warm and safe and happy. I love it. Oh, and I took off those waterproof socks when I got in the tent. And my little merino undersocks are completely dry. I can't believe that. That is a game changer for me. It's a pet hate of mine. I've been wet feet. I hate it. So that's amazing. I'm pitched nice and early today. It's about five o'clock, I think. So it'll start getting dark in about an hour. And I'm just going to chill out. I might put a film on today. Just relax and have a rest and enjoy being out here listening to the weather. Don't think we'll be getting stars tonight. It is warming up. It's about five degrees now. I'm slashing it down outside. I'm going to bed now, guys. See you in the morning. Crazy in here tonight. warmed up to around seven degrees. The wind last night was crazy. Totally mad. Um, a load of pegs and guys have been ripped out. Wow, look, this tent is taking a beating. There we are. Let's come out there. That's my way out. Oh my god, look. I did manage to get about six hours of sleep, really broken light sleep, because it was so noisy and relentless. So I've not had much rest this weekend. I think that's the strongest wind that the hilly has been subjected to so far. And he did absolutely fine, bless him. Let's say stuff got ripped out, but that's gonna happen. I should have got out before bed last night and around and tightened everything and checked and everything but I didn't because I didn't want to get out of my cozy nook so that's what happens but yeah still standing totally fine I'm gonna have this and then get going so this one was difficult but that's okay the more I get to know myself the more I come to realize that I've never really made life particularly easy for myself I mean, I could choose a steady, stable job instead of being self-employed in artistic-y things. I could live with someone, share financial burdens, and not have to take responsibility for everything, all by myself. But it seems I enjoy the freedom of doing things the hard way. 
I don't particularly enjoy feeling safe and comfortable all of the time. Don't get me wrong, I love my home comforts, a comfy bed and nice food as much as the next person, but too much of it gives me a quiet uneasiness, a restlessness bubbling under the surface. And yeah, I could choose not to do this, not to push myself, not to haul a third of my body weight up mountains, and then I wouldn't experience the discomfort, both physical and mental, that comes with these kind of trips. The hard way, after all, can be quite hard. So is it worth it?